everyone and welcome to days 28 and 29 of our RV10 build. On these days we were continuing work on the horizontal stabilizer. So we left off at the end of day 27 with the deburring of all of the parts for the horizontal stabilizer that we had pulled apart. And because we have to deburr both sides of all of the holes, that takes quite a bit of time. So um, we're still here working at it. As you can see, just even in one of the skins, it's a lot of holes. Somebody had asked about this before. Tyler is using uh, on those skins a little lightweight drill that we bought at Home Depot. Um, cheap it was like 20 bucks but the big thing is it's low power it runs at a low speed and we use that with a little deburring tip to uh, help with those long swaths of uh, skin that have to get deburred with all the little holes it doesn't um, it's not strong enough it's not fast enough to countersink the holes it just does a nice job with the deburring and I'm over here working with the flanges, trying to get all of those holes deburred. It's really easy to get the access to the outside of the flanges there on the ribs, but on the inside it can be a little bit trickier. And so we use the scotch bright normally in there to um, help get rid of the burrs on the sides of the holes that are there on the inside of the flanges. The big thing is just to remember to um, prime everything afterwards since you've scuffed that um, bit of the aluminum. And we also weren't using our little Dremel tool that I've mentioned in another video. So as you can see, I have the little file out just to try and make sure to clean up any rough edges I come across um, in between the little flanges while I am deburring. So again, it would have just been so much easier having that little deburring tip, but you know, lessons learned, it's a lot better now. <laughs> Uh, a little update in the meantime, since this deburring is nothing new, Tyler and I have ordered our fuselage kit. Yay! So that will be arriving sometime in early June. So we're pretty excited about that. We're well into the wings. The main spars are done. The, both tanks are almost done. The ailerons have been started. And I think I'll be finishing today or tomorrow the wing ribs. So really excited about getting that fuselage kit ordered and coming in. And kind of can't believe we're at that point already ordering the third kit for the plane, but very exciting. If any of you out there are thinking about getting your own RV and have enjoyed my videos and uh, posts and everything I'll be doing on Instagram to keep you up to date, please consider giving Vans our builder number, which I've listed in the video description down below when you're ordering your tail cone kit. They will send us uh, $100 as a thank you and it doesn't cost you anything extra, but it does let me know that you've been enjoying the videos and have found them helpful. Another thing that um, we've done recently that we found pretty helpful uh, is that we've ordered the digital plans from Vans. And so instead of just having the paper book that you get with the kit, it's nice because they'll send you this little uh, thumb drive and it has quite a lot of information on it, not just each section individually in their own labeled PDF. So it's very easy to just pull up the section that you're working on. Um, but it also has brochures for some of their other aircraft, including the RV-10 with different specs and everything. It has links to the um, different resources that might be helpful on their website, as well as for other vendors. It includes, um, a digital version of their three view drawing and their cutaway drawing, like the big prints that you get when you order your uh, your tail cone kit. And we actually have one of them now hanging in the back of our garage just because it's kind of cool, but it's neat to have the, the digital copy there. It also has the sections at the beginning of your instruction manual. So like section five at the beginning there where it goes over all of the different um, tips and tricks and instructions for how to do things like the rib flange faceting and riveting and whatnot. All of those there in section five are included as well. So that's pretty nice. Uh, it also has um, optional parts drawing. So things for like the wiring harness, wingtip lighting, tail lighting, uh, et cetera. It's got all of those included on the thumb drive. There's a lot of resources that they include when you buy the digital plans. Now, it does have a disclaimer in there that this is mostly, the digital plans are meant to be more of a preview. And they really stress the importance of making sure to check the actual printed instructions that were provided to you as those will be the most up-to-date and current instructions. So 
keep that in mind. It's it's good to have the digital copy, but make sure to go back and double check uh, in the printed version uh, that you're you're doing everything correct and that you don't have the outdated information. But for the two of us, the big reason why that's been helpful is as we've moved on with the plane and the two of us might be working on different things, it has been nice where once we've looked through the manual together to have one of us be able to pull it up on our iPad or our iPhone and to have the other person then use the book if we're on different sections and have instead of having to keep flipping back and forth and back and forth in the book. So it has just been nice to have it um, as an option to have both of us be able to look at different parts of the instructions at the same time. There are two things that I kind of wish that they had done for purchasing these digital files. The first is that it would be kind of nice if there was an instant download option instead of waiting for the um, thumb drive to arrive in the mail just where you could purchase it on the store and then instantly download all of the different PDF files. Just seems like something would be kind of nice. I mean, it is neat to have the little thumb drive with the Vans logo and everything on it, but having the files available for an instant download would just be, it's silly, it's little, but it was just something I thought about that would be nice if that was an option. The other reason I was thinking that would be nice, like the second thing would be that if it is available as an instant download instead of something that's put onto a thumb drive is that it would be perhaps a little bit easier for them to keep everything most up to date. So instead of having where with the disclaimer that's provided on the thumb drive that these might not be the most current instructions and to make sure to look at the ones that are in your book. Um, whatever file it is that they're using to print all of the instructions that are provided to you when you purchase each kit, that file could then just be uploaded into their uh, server wherever they have all of the PDFs available for you to download when you purchase the digital files so you wouldn't necessarily have to worry about are these instructions up to date. Whenever they make a change to the file before they, for the one that they're going to be printing to include with your um, your kit, your actual instructions, it, it would just be easy. They could go and and add that new updated file to their server to download. So again, there's nothing wrong with what they have and what they're giving. It was just kind of, you know, thinking about it afterwards where it's like, hmm, that'd be kind of nice if they had that. So anyway, getting back to the build, you can see that we have our DRDT2 out here. And so the next task that we had to do after deburring everything is to go ahead and dimple all the skins and dimple all the ribs. And then we also had to go and countersink the spar and the stringers to receive the dimples on the skins. And I did go into more detail on the countersinking in a different video. I'll link that here above in the upper right and I'll put it below as well. Um, but this is where because you're, you're countersinking it not to be flush to the rivet head, you're countersinking it a little bit more so that it's flush to the skin. So you're, you're actually countersinking a little extra because that thickness of the skin there has to nest nicely and flush into the, the spar and the stringers. So that's where having this little template that you can use where you just take a piece of scrap aluminum that's the right thickness for whatever the skins are that you're going to be using and drill a hole into it and dimple it to match whatever is going to be on the skins. Um, you can then use that to make sure that you've got it set properly before you actually start countersinking on the part that you're going to be using. What I've used to do all this for testing everything is the RV training project that you can buy on their website. And I want to say I saw recently that now Vans is going to be including that little RV training project kit in their tail cone kit to help everybody out to get used to using all their tools before getting started. I, I'll have to try and figure out where I saw that, but I, I really think I saw that somewhere that they're going to start including that RV training project. The one where it looks like a, a small wing or part of an elevator or something um, just to help you get used to using everything and reading the plans and whatnot. Anyway, the point is there's some, I used those parts from that, the very first 
bit of that RV training project where they have an aluminum angle and some skin. I've, you know, kind of harvested from those, the little, I've cut bits of the aluminum skin from there to then use for all my little templates. And then I use the aluminum angles from that. I've just drilled a bunch of holes into it of different sizes like number 30 and number 40 and so then whenever I need to set the countersink it's really easy to go in and then use one of the holes to set the countersink to the right depth and then I use my little template to check and make sure if I'm trying to make it where it's flush for the skins and not just flush for the rivet head um, it's nice to then have that to to work with. By now I have I think like <laughs> five or six of them um, for the different sizes of the drills, but also like we have um, tank skin dimple dies and whatnot. So everything's just labeled <laughs> really well so that I know which one's which and I don't have to try and make new ones. I was also able, I counted once to see when I was changing it from being flush to the rivet head to flush to the skin, how many... On those countersink cutters, you know how uh, I mentioned you have to turn the cage to adjust it, the adjusted depth for it. And what I did is I counted how many little teeth I had to move over to change it from being flush to the rivet head to flush to the skin. And so I wrote it on there. And so I know exactly how much I have to adjust it if it's set to one. Instead of having to sit there and putz with it trying to figure out how to set it backwards, uh, I know that I need to change it exactly. I think it's 10 teeth. So either I, I set the depth so it's a little bit deeper by 10 teeth or I set the depth so it's a little bit shallower by 10 teeth. And that by the teeth, I just mean all the little... The, the nesting teeth for the two parts of the countersink cutter. I know just how much to turn it to set it properly. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing trying to explain without having you right here, but hopefully that makes sense. It's just kind of nice to not end up having to waste a lot of time um, trying to, to set it over and over again and, and make sure that you have it set just right. After everything's been done here with all of the countersinking and the uh, deburring and the dimpling that we had to do, we went and the next day took all the parts outside to prime them. And uh, one thing I did do, uh, there's a bearing on, there's at least one bearing, I think actually there's two, I don't remember, this was a while ago, on the spar. And what I did make sure to do is to put some masking tape on it. I, I definitely didn't want to get any primer in there to gunk up the bearing. So I just made sure to really cover that really well with some painter's tape so we didn't get any gunk in there and mess up those bearings. Um... And with all the different parts, it was also, I found it really helpful to kind of keep them all in order so that that way, if when I'm priming them, it happens to cover up the markings that I have to help keep track of which you know rib goes where, which stringer goes where, which stringer goes with each other. Kind of having a system to how I laid it out there on the cardboard as I was painting, it was really easy to then just take a marker and write on the cardboard to help keep track. And so that way, if anything got covered during the priming, I knew where it was and I could then just go back afterwards and remark them to help keep track of all the different parts. So just a little thing that we found helpful again and instead of having a uh oh I can't I can't read the markings anymore now what? Anyway, that about sums it up for these two days. Just a lot of the deburring and dimpling and countersinking and then priming. So next we will be begin riveting all of this together. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos like this to follow along as we build our RV10. And be sure to hit the little bell icon to make sure that you're notified every time I post a new video.